Welcome to this special edition of Business We Defined. Last week we kicked off our coverage of issues in the election dubbed Manifesto. That's money for PESA and Festo at the end. And last week we covered cost of living and after this, the feedback we received was that we need to talk about taxation as an issue in the election. And I am joined in on studio by FCPA Erastas Kwaka, who is a member of the Public Finance Committee at the Institute of Certified Public Accountants in Kenya. Welcome on set, sir. Well, thank you. Let's start from this point, uh, FCPA Kwaka. This evening we've just received the alert from EPRA that starting midnight tonight, pump prices are going up across super, kerosene, diesel by nine shillings. This is the second month in a row where it's going up by nine shillings. Your immediate response to that? Um, I think, um, Julian, what I would have wished to hear alongside that announcement is uh, by how much has the government reduced the tax in the fuel bill. Yes. That would have been enough to compensate for it so that if you increase it by 20, you also reduce by 20. Yes. But I know there will be this argument that inside that amount there is the money for reducing and controlling and managing the price. But we know what happens for that money to be released. So it was the most inopportune moment to increase prices. One, it is an election year. Yeah. And uh, the, no government would want to be unpopular when it is coming to elections. Uh, all candidates are promising us reduction in prices mm -hmm. uh, and everything else. And the question is, why can that be done now? Yes. Number three, when you increase also kerosene, you have completely knocked out Wanjiku. Yeah. And that is not good. And uh, apart from that, there is what you call the transmittive effect yeah. of any price increase. So you increase price of fuel, it is not fuel you are increasing. You are increasing, in fact, the price of everything. Across the chain. Across the chain, including food, including water. And um, it might not be very smart at the moment. And the excuses I know which will be thrown around will be Russia, Ukraine war, the demand for oil in the Middle East, and of course uh, the big four countries uh, are taking more to put in reserves, yes. fearing the escalation of the war and things like that. But what about us? What are you doing to make sure that the person, the consumer of transport, the consumer of all the other things on the chain are not affected. But FCP, Kwaka, let me hold you there and say, yeah. uh, in defense of the government here, one is that we have a subsidy in place. Mm. The second thing is that uh, you're right. I mean, this is a global phenomenon. So we have seen because of the geopolitical tensions, the price of oil rallying significantly. Mm. And even if you look at the regional peers, mm. prices are quite high. So uh, maybe uh, we can cut them some slack, we could say. Yes, but uh, as you do that, two months in a row, it's a bit heavy. Yeah. And it is not possible to say that two months ago you did not see what would happen in the next month. Yeah. It's not possible. Uh, we have statisticians, we have all this forward pricing of oil and uh, many other things. Okay. Let me now come to our subject tonight, uh, yeah. taxation as an issue in the election. All these politicians are walking around promising a reduction in the cost of living and um, stable, predictable tax regime. When you hear those kind of promises, and Kenyans want to know, how do we assess the viability of this? Mm -hmm. What are the issues you look at? One is um, reality normally speaks faster than the tank can herald, uh, they tell us. Because uh, promising, you can promise anything. You can even promise everybody something in the country. But the reality of it, it is true, tax can be reduced. But uh, the overpromising, I think, is dangerous, uh, Julian, if you ask me, because it is not possible to reduce everything. The budget we have at the moment is beginning to work next month. Yeah. It's already locked. And it will take us up to next year, in June, to be able to say, are we there or not? Mm -hmm. With the borrowing, uh, 
you know, promising and uh, hoping to get and things like that. Did that happen? Did the revenue come in? So sometimes it could be too much, uh, the kind of promises they're giving. But I must say that it is possible still to reduce some areas, not all, not all taxes. And when you talk about the possibility of reducing some areas, and this is happening within the context of Kenya being under the IMF program, which yeah. of course has revenue targets, mm. uh, many times we look at it and we wonder, is there really some space for us to cut back on some taxes? You remember the Petroleum Taxes and Levies Bill went to the Parliament. After the first reading, we have never heard about it. Mm -hmm. And the argument is that because of the IMF pressure on this. Mm -hmm. Yes, a IMF um, slavery, uh, if I could use that word with a lot of apologies, uh, Julian, uh, is there. But sometimes we have taken ourselves to the gallows. Why? Bad spending. Yeah. When we have a budget, and uh, as I said here, you know, before in this particular place, yes. is that you take a budget, you divide it into three parts. One third, which will be stolen, the other, the other third will pay debts, and the other third, which is now the crumb, the crumbs which have fallen you know, down the table, will now try to do some development work and, and other and expenditure spending. with it. Yes. And um, you are in a catch-22 situation. So because you have brought yourself to the gallows, the IMF goes around laughing. I know nobody will like that terminology, but they will be laughing. Why do I say so, Julian? A few years ago, when we were able to collect enough, we know it from various quarters yeah. that the IMF came begging, begging and say, please take some money and help to create certain programs which could consume the money and things like that. Yeah. So you don't look very nice to IMF when you are saying, I am able to stand on my own. Please take a walk down the street. So we brought ourselves to where we are today. Now we need to manage that relationship. And it must not be that of a beggar and a big brother. Yeah. It should be genuine support to help us restructure our economy and be able to generate enough resources to run our country. Okay. Now, failing that, we have no other option but to cut down on everything and tell the IMF, IMF, mm, leave us alone for now, or if you're supporting us, support us on these key areas which have got long-term transmittive positive effect in the economy that will help us to generate revenue. And of course, when we do that, many other things then fall into place. Prices will be manageable, food, ma food will be managed, and many other things. Okay. Yeah. So um, before we take a break here, yeah. uh, one of the proposals in the um, Finance Committee report regarding the Finance Bill 2022 mm -hmm. was the slashing of uh, VAT on LPG from 16 to 8%, and that mm. was actually endorsed in the House. Mm. We're waiting to see what the President uh, thinks about that. But the question here is, as an election issue, to what extent do you think this issue of uh, petroleum product prices from a tax and levy standpoint mm. can be scaled down? Uh, it, it is sweet for election purposes, uh, but I must say it came late in the day because um, as ISPAC, we, uh, we argued and gave positions on some of those things that uh, the gas, the removal of tax on things like LPG was a government process mm. and a government promise. The idea, uh, Julian, if you remember, was that um, even gas cylinders and uh, their means to take gas was going to be made available right across the country, and we know it happened. Yeah. Now, the same you comes back before the sun sets, and says, now I'm putting back um, VAT, yes. I'm putting back what? Tax. So either the policy was wrong, or there is some misallocation in terms of 
what do we want to achieve with this policy statement? Yes. And that has not worked. So when you bring back VAT, again, it is challenged. You take it out or reduce it, as yes. it were. <laughs> yeah. It is good for election. But it should also be one thing, Julian, that we must live in a predictable taxi environment so that I can plan my future two, three years down the line. Yeah. And I know this is the position with gas. Mm -hmm. But if I can't tell until, you until know, the budget statement is being read. It's not good. <laughs> that point by uh, LCP Rasta Squawker takes us to a short break. When we come back, this issue is talking about predictability. We'll be discussing the national tax policy and whether we're likely to see it in the next regime. Stay tuned. The Kenya Academy of Sports cordially invites you to the second annual International Sports Conference to be held at the Safari Park Hotel from the 15th to the 17th of June 2022 under the theme Investing in Sports Talent Development for Sustainable Elite Performance. Visit www.kas.or.ke slash KAS Conference 2022. You do your best out there, let us do our best in here with the disinfecting power of Jake. Because Jake cleans and kills 99.9% .9 of illness-causing germs and COVID-19 in your home. Jake, your family's guardian against germs and COVID-19. <laughs> Baby and infant starts to work on fever in just 15 minutes. Trust Panadol Baby and Infant to work on fever fast to bring back their cute smiles. Like every mom, you want the best for your child. Happy birthday. You feed her mind and nurture her body. And you understand there are times you have to let her pick herself up when she falls. You make sure she knows the joy of sharing happy moments with family. And when everything comes together, you above all others will share the taste of success with her. Blue Band tastes like mama's love. It is time to unlock Africa's energy potential. Africa's first ever sustainable energy conference. Welcome to Alcaria, the home of geothermal in Africa. It will be a great experience. Tickets available on kenyabuzz.com. Sustainable Energy Conference. Renewable energy for sustainable development. Every five years, an easiness befalls our beloved country, Kenya, due to disputed election results. The repercussions are often catastrophic with profound socioeconomic impact. A time has come for us to embrace our diverse cultures and rich heritage as our collective strength as a country. Nation Media Group, NCIC and partners under the initiative of Mimim Kenya will be holding a series of town hall forums across the country with the aim of fostering patriotism and national cohesion as the country gears up for the upcoming general elections. Join us this week on 15th June in Kondele, Kisumu, 16th June in Manyata, Kisumu, and 18th June in Kericho from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m.
Welcome back to Business We Define. Tonight we are discussing taxation as an election issue. This is of course in light of the August 9th, 2022 general election and the promises being made around reducing taxation and ensuring Kenyans have a bearable cost of living. We are privileged to have on set FCPA Erastus Kwaka from the Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Always a delight to have you. Thank you. The subject of a national tax policy, uh, as Emil launched their manifesto, there was no mention about it. Everyone is just saying we shall guarantee you a stable taxation regime. Mm -hmm. Do you see the hopes that we could see a uh, national tax policy in the near to medium term? I think it is possible where there is a will, there will always be a way, but um, the tax policy has been in discussion for the last uh, three years or more. Uh, sometimes I mix it because of the COVID break, <laughs> but it is something that we have discussed for a while. Yes. But you know, uh, Julian, what seems to be happening, bits and pieces of the tax policy, things in the tax policy, are actually being incorporated and brought into the various finance bills. Okay. It has happened. The last uh, two, two budget speeches mm -hmm. have brought in elements from that. Uh, and it might be suggesting that there are problems with the implementation of the whole tax policy, why take bits of it if it was a good thing? Yeah. And why delay the rest if it was a good thing? Mm -hmm. If it's good for the country, that thing ought to have been operationalized fully. Yes. And I would like also to assure the government that uh, it, nothing is written in stone. If we start off and we find there are difficulties in some of the areas that we are talking about, there's no harm. The same us who made it as Kenyans, mm -hmm. we go back to parliament and clean it up. Yes. And you will find also that some of the cleaning up required, Julian, does not need parliament. Yeah. May just need admin, administrative uh, By the action. Yeah. And, uh, and it will be fine. Okay. We should bring the tax policy thing into operation. And the reason is not difficult to get. Those of us who do advisory work to foreigners and people who want to come to this country or to this region yeah. and may want to locate their offices in Kenya and many other things, they would want to have a predictable environment. I need to be able to advise a foreigner coming to Kenya that this is what VAT, corporation tax, withholding tax, or transfer pricing rules and uh, other things, yeah. this is what will be there for the next three years. Okay. So that those who bring us money are able to decide and say, yes, I think I can go to Kenya. Mm -hmm. And do you know what? Kenya will benefit much more than being uh, KG with uh, a very important document like this one. Yes. Why? FDIs will not, not only bring us Forex, we are now a bit struggling with Forex uh, and a bit of uh, a difficulties in getting. The we dollar. know that. Yes. Uh, number two, employment. And, the, and when we talk about employment, there is the multiplier effect of employment. Yes. And that needs an environment that is predictable. Let me hold you there, FCP, yeah. and uh, just switch gears uh, because of time. Three years ago, in November yeah. 2019, when the parliament revised the debt ceiling from 50% of GDP to 9 trillion shillings, you and I had a conversation yeah. on AM Live. Last week, the National Treasury Cabinet Secretary gazetted the revision, not last week, I think two weeks ago, mm -hmm. of a debt ceiling now from 9 trillion to 10 trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. When you look at this within the context of um, taxation and public debt as an election issue, how should Kenyans look at this matter? Um, with... Um kind of careful eye because um, in 2019 when the when we stopped comparing or getting debt on the basis of uh, as GDP. a percentage of GDP Parliament said because Kenya is an oil producing country <laughs> let us remove this idea of uh, tying the debt to GDP. 
And I suppose, Julian, uh, Kenya has been producing oil since 2019. Mm -hmm. I, I at least I've not uh, heard about it myself. Uh, at least in the early oil pilot scheme, yes. Yeah, yeah. when there were a few trucks uh, exactly. you know, running along the road to Mombasa. Yeah. Now, I would not want to use a strong word, but people need to be serious about these things. Mm. When you move the debt ceiling from uh, 9 to 10, in 2019, when we, as ISPAC, we met with the Senate, when Parliament had passed this without passing through Senate. Yes. So Senate had to quickly, again, uh, bring together, uh, you know, people to talk about it. At that time, uh, the suspicion was that the debt actually had exceeded nine, nine billion. Trillion. A trillion, sorry. Trillion, trillion. And the debt policy paper, which had been produced in February, did not foresee the need for that increase a few months later, which then calls into question what happened. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we have moved it to officially to 10 million. To 10, uh, sorry, 10 trillion. trillion. Sorry. Yeah, those are figures that are not common. Eh? Yeah, 10 trillion. It is okay because debt is not bad. That, the world over. And there is almost no country, apart from a few, of course, like Japan and others, yeah. that really don't need debt. But if debt is used properly, it also has got um, a very good effect in terms of generating both short-term and long-term long-term positive effects yeah. used properly. If not used properly, you are back to square one. Mm -hmm. And you are, you are playing what we call a, a zero-sum game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm told we are running out of time, but let me get your concluding thoughts around this matter. So Kenyans are preparing to go to the poll in August. There are all these manifestos being tabled out here. Yeah. What are some of the um, key points you think we should look at from a taxation standpoint when we assess these manifestos? What I would want um, and expect, really, is that um, all the political parties that are battling it out there, whether it is the first one or the last one, it doesn't matter, let them, before the end of this month, tell us what is their tax program yeah. for this country. When I'm talking about tax program, I'm talking about personal taxes, because um, at the moment we just have over two million people in PAYE. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody can argue that because the lower tax rate was uh, raised uh, to 24,000 shillings, shillings yes. some people were thrown out of the tax net. But is it true that two point, just two point something million people are the only ones that are on salaried employment in Kenya? Mm -hmm. There's a question mark there. And um, is the rate right? We, some of us think the rates are, are not right. They're high or low? A, they can be lower. Yeah. And still you gain. Okay. Because the person who is the individual as an employee may have this uh, view, and some of us support the view, that it, it is high. Mm -hmm. If it's lower, that money will still come back to the government through other means. Yeah. For example, VAT. Uh, Julian. VAT and the whole tax collection regime is about 15% of GDP. But certain experts, and I support their view, think it should be at least about 20, mm -hmm. if not more, yeah. because of the kind of economy we have. Mm -hmm. So the question is, where is this large amount of money sitting. If that money is tapped, I can assure you no shilling needs to be increased on our taxes. Okay. Because there will be enough. And again, if that happens, you can begin talking to IMF in a much more stronger language. Okay. Yeah. Maybe your final thought. I'm told we have about a minute to go. Um, thoughts on uh, excise. Excise has been a very emotive issue around the current budget cycle and also way into the election. Yeah. Very briefly. Excise is, uh, in my view, not performing as it should. And you will need to reform institutions 
that generate excisable uh, goods. Mm -hmm. In government, not, not outside. Yeah. In government. Okay. And, uh, and you know them. Yeah, you know, the cabs, uh, the Kenya Ports Authority, and all those areas. Mm -hmm. That area needs to be looked at. It will and is capable of generating much more. I know you asked that question again uh, uh, virtually a few months ago. Yes. Uh, that is the truth. Excise can bring you much more money I see. than it is at the moment. Right, unfortunately, that point by FCP Rasta Squaka takes us to the close of this conversation where we have attempted to give you a feel of uh, taxation as an election issue. This conversation continues online. If you have any questions, please shoot them at us. We shall be happy to bring you experts such as FCP Rastas to help shed more light on this. We continue our coverage in the subsequent bullet, uh, episodes, rather not bulletins, of Business Redefined to elicit an appreciation of the issues we should be thinking about as we prepare for the August election. Stay tuned.